Hey guys, it's me, Dave, and welcome back to week two of Building Crate, guys. Um, this particular segment, I think you guys are gonna really like it by the end, um, meaning that there's actually gonna be quite a bit done. You can kind of get a preview behind me. Uh, you guys, hopefully, by the end of this segment, will have a really good idea, at least a visual representation of what I particular am thinking in terms of scale and what crate's gonna look like. As you can kind of see behind me, we're gonna get the base plates down. We're gonna get the tables connected. I got that third table this week. So now everything's kind of coming together in terms of the size and scale. You should kind of start getting the bigger picture here. Um, one big thing that happened over the last week is leaked images of the next wave of the Lego Star Wars uh, sets for December slash January of 2018 have been leaked and those kind of went viral this week. Uh, at least within the Lego sites. Um, and the biggest set that's important for this mock is the Defense of Crate. I believe it's 75, I think it's 202, or it's 202 or 203, I think it's, I think it's 75202. I'm not sure, let's see how good my memory is. Um, let me know down in the comments below if I got that right or wrong. But uh, Defense of Crate, it's about a $50 set. It's similar to the Battle of Takodana or the Battle of Scarif. That, both of those were kind of those $50 sets that had like a couple minifigures in it, uh, kind of a couple things that you can play with in a bigger, um, you know, scale object for, uh, for the Scarif set. I think it was the bunker for the Takodana set. It was kind of Mouse Kanata's castle. For the crate set, it's actually the ski speeder. Those ski speeders that we see in the Last Jedi trailers, in the movie, um, they're kind of like snow speeders, except they're not. They're like very long. Um, I don't know how to really on it. There's these very narrow type of like sleek looking speeder things that have this little like tail on the bottom that kind of scrape up the dirt of crate. That's the red dust you see. Um, those are called ski speeders. I called them, I don't know what I called them last time in the, in the first week of crate, but anyhow, that set particularly is important because it, it, it comes with a ski speeder. That is a humongous and essential part of this entire set. Um, and what I did, and you'll see this at the end of the segment, is I used another Lego set to kind of visually use as a representation in terms of scale of what that ski speeder is. Because, this, because the main thing in the defensive crate set is that ski speeder, um, there's actually, it's actually pretty big. Like it's over scale, at least in terms of um, Lego uh, Heavy Assault Walker or ATM6, whatever you want to call the, the big new walker on crate. Um, that compared to the ski, ski speeder, the ski speeder is like way bigger than it should be compared to the ATM6. Actually, I think the ski speeder's minifigure scale and the ATM6 is just significantly off mini, a minifigure scale. Um, and we're gonna talk about that in the later part of this segment is scale. That is a big deal with this mock and how I'm kind of dealing with it. Cause Lego didn't really kind of play with their own rules. That sometimes they'll make things minifigure scale, sometimes they won't. Um, particularly the ATM6 isn't in a minifigure scale, and that will cause problems that we're gonna that we're gonna face. And I want to hear the discussions later in the uh, down in the comments below. But yeah, guys, this, this is gonna be an exciting uh, segment because there's gonna be some questions to be asked. There's gonna be some things that will be revealed in terms of what I'm thinking. So without ado, let's get into the segment right now. All right, guys. So starting the video off, as you'll see, I have three tables right now. All three are here. Uh, for some reason, the newest one that I've added, uh, it's it's darker uh, than the other two. Um, and I bought those two at different times of the year, and this one is a different time of year as well. All of them are from Ikea. Love Ikea um, desks. They're the best, in my opinion, for the price, especially these wooden ones. This is pure wood. It's not um, particle board or anything that would break. It's real, uh, I think it's birch wood. And because of that, I think that the color's different. Like it's a different like type of birch tree or just different, you know, different times of the year, the wood change colors, something like that. Maybe it's just been sitting longer, who knows. Um, but anyhow, it's been sanded down and uh, we put a coat of lacquer on it, uh, all three of these. This one hasn't been sanded as well as this one, but I mean, it doesn't really matter because Legos are gonna be sitting on it for quite a long time anyways. I can always sand it down later. So what I'm gonna end up doing is I'm actually gonna have the tables aligned this way, and you see this; these two are kind of aligned those way, uh, like uh, horizontally, and this one's um, aligned uh, vertically. Um, so I'm gonna 
align it so that they're all vertical this way uh, because it's kind of especially right here you're getting these kind of dips in the corners and that's what I love and hate about these tables uh, all of them have these legs down here that these legs move up and down if you see the uh, numbers right here see that right there I don't know if it's gonna camera's gonna focus but anyhow those legs go up and down so what's great is I can raise the tables up if I want to uh, if I want to stand and build Legos I can do that um, but the problem with that is when you have three of these tables you're trying to match the height to all three and that's very tricky not just because of uh, putting the legs down but also it's carpet is the floor so the way the uh, the desks sit on the carpet, you know, it takes a little time for the desk to uh, kind of sit and really like, uh, you know, push the carpet all the way down because it might take a, like a day or so before the height's about the right, you know, height you want it. So, you know, that's the problem with uh, having three different tables. It would be nice to have one giant table. Um, ideally, I'd like a big piece of uh, plywood and make that into a table somehow. But unfortunately, don't have the time nor resources to do that. Um, so I think three of these tables will work perfectly fine. Also, I always recommend some type of hard surface like wood. Um, Kashyyyk was made on a, a ping pong table. That was great. Do not build it. Uh, these giant mocks. And I, I think I've said this in Scarif too, but... Uh, do, don't build these giant mocks on uh, non like hard surfaces like wood or steel or something like what I'm talking about specifically is those plastic tables that you can buy at like Costco, Walmart, Target, whatever. They're cheap. They work well for when you're building Legos, but when you're making a mock on them is there's dipping points in that plastic over time. They warp and stuff it's not a good idea so I highly recommend that you get some type of solid surface particularly wood maybe like a particle board plastic material but I prefer a nice hard wood because I know this is not gonna bend this is not gonna warp over time that is the best thing about these tables that I love so much and that's why I've bought three of them um, but anyhow I'm gonna reorganize the tables clear the tables off uh, I gotta take those two shelves you can kind of see the other one there's two shelves there those got to come out of the room kind of just reorganize the whole room and then I'm gonna uh, put the tables in the way I want them to and we'll come back with uh, all the base plates down and we'll go from there and there it is guys all the base plates down all the tables connected it looks awesome so this is our this is our canvas right here. Um, this is what we're going to be building crate on is this humongous surface. This is a lot of room, but unfortunately, this is just barely enough space. Honestly, it, it should be. I was telling you guys during the plans that it should be probably about two more base plates this way. Then would be about perfect. But unfortunately, I just don't have the space for that. Um, which kind of sucks, honestly. Uh, but, you know, have to deal with what I have, which honestly, this is more than um, enough uh, to make something really cool. This is the size of Kashyyyk, too. This is exactly, I believe, how many base plates. Maybe Kashyyyk was a tad bit longer this way, but not by much. Um, actually, it might be, it might be, Kashyyyk might have been smaller now that I think about it. Anyhow, um, but yeah, this, this is the canvas. So you'll, write, you'll notice right away there's this kind of, line right here and the reason why that's there is there's a slight uh, overlapping going on here between the base plates because the tables are just oh so slightly um, off uh, in terms of its uh, height so it's mainly this middle one because if you come on this side you'll see that same type of line going along here so it's mainly this middle table that needs to be realigned and I've kind of tried already but uh, haven't had too much luck but uh, I'll end up getting it to work uh, and probably by the next uh, segment I'll have it all even so we can definitely start building but hey I mean this is pretty awesome <laughs> I'm surprised I actually had enough base plates on hand I actually still have some more right here I still have another six base plates so that's pretty great that I actually had those on hand I thought I was gonna have to buy some more but it turns out I had enough but again that's uh it's actually four, not by four, not four by seven base plates. It's four by six, um, so twenty 
four base plates. Um, but there you go. So the last thing I want to do actually before we call this an end is I want to do a couple things. The first thing I want to do is I actually want to put some vehicles. That itself will right away help you guys understand scale wise what this will look like in the end. Vehicles help quite a bit, especially with, you know, Lego's new Last Jedi sets. But I'm also going to put some outlines of like, oh, this is where I'm thinking, you know, based off, let me grab the plans, based off these plans right here, um, where I'm thinking things should go. And that'll help you guys visualize things and the actual perspective of the actual mock. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. That'll be the last thing we do. So let's see what that looks like. All right, guys. So I actually, um, I went a little above and beyond for you guys. I really wanted to uh, to do something cool for you guys at the end of this episode, um, and so I did. And uh, I actually created a, a structure to not only give you what the bottom is going to look like visually, but also the height as well. And as you'll see, I've uh, put together this uh, little contraption that barely... <laughs> And I mean barely just holds up here <laughs> like it's 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 ready to come down, but uh, it, I mean it works it works so uh, <laughs> Yeah, all right. Well, anyhow, let's uh, let's explain what's going on here. So um, The trench here. So if we take a look at our plans um, Our trench our turrets. This is our main base uh, circular wall. These are the mountains right here here and here so that's what I've done. So the white part right here is our trench. The dark red part there and over there is our turrets. And then right here is the mountains. And then where the white is right here, that's where the um, big opening of the base is. It's this um, very circular um, type of wall. Um, wait, I got a picture. This. This is gonna be that right there. Um, or actually this right here, so yeah, you can kind of get an idea. And then we have, of course, our walkers right here. All right, I'll, I'm gonna talk about the walkers in a second, but let me go ahead and finish up. So um, then what I have is I've actually, I thought, uh, at first I had this and this the same height, and I was like, you know what, it'd be cool if it kind of cascaded up on either side, even though that's uh, it's not really accurate. So here's the base right here, this is the base. It's this like big wall from what I can tell. It's like a slightly vertical, um, slightly angled wall that goes uh, like at a 15 degree angle inwards to the mount um, to the structure. But as you can see, these mountains, they kind of go up and down. So I figured that I'd just do it both up like that. I think that would look cool. Um, because you can kind of do with whatever because I'm not gonna be able to finish the whole base. Like the base wall will come all the way up to here cause it's that big actually. Um, and the mountains are just gonna go up here. Um, so it's not gonna be, it's not gonna go to the actual top here. Otherwise it'd probably be up to the ceiling in this room. Um, that's just not really possible. I think this right here with the height I already have is asking a lot. Um, that'll be quite the building challenge, honestly. Uh, but I'm up for it. So yeah, I, I actually, just by looking at this right here, I think this gives a really good visual of what I'm thinking for a building crate. Like, I don't think it could have gone any better right here. So I'm super excited, honestly. This, this looks awesome in my opinion, but guys, your opinion matters too. So please comment below. Do you like what I've done here? Is there anything I, uh, that you think I should change? Um, so going back over here, we have the mountain again. And then we have the circular, um, you know, wall. And of course that's the trench right there. And then more mountain would be here. And this is where it would start. It would, and then it would just kind of slant this way upwards all the way up to this height right here. Um, and then this wall right here, the circular wall would also kind of slant in. And boy, that's gonna be quite the challenge. I can tell um, it's, it's certainly not gonna be easy um, building that, uh, that circular wall that will be the challenge of this build by far. Um, the turrets, I know a lot of you will probably say this looks too small. Um, please consider that they'll, they'll be built up pretty tall, probably about like about that height right there. Um, and they'll look bigger than, than this is. They, they'll kind of like come over into the trench a little bit. You'll see. Um, 
they're going to be a little bit bigger than that looks. And you know, honestly, you don't want them to be too big. I think that's about the right size the way I have them right now. The two trenches here and here because again, you don't want to get so much pushed into this that you're losing the bigger picture of the mock, which is this beautiful kind of landscape that's very open and vast. The, it's key to have a lot of the details, but also to have enough space for, you need, you need that breathing room between the vehicles and the mountain. Now that's what I want to talk about is the ATM6 and that ATAT -AT over there. As you guys know, the ATAT -AT will return in The Last Jedi, as well as the brand new vehicle ATM6, which is this. And as you can tell, they're the same height. The, the both, uh, both the Lego models are the same height, which is completely inaccurate. The ATM6 should be about probably about that tall. It should be almost double its current height right now. Now, I was considering um, building my own ATM6, and that way I would have my uh, AT, at there, and so, you know, you'd have these giant ATM6s. But if I did that, if I did make one, you know, say like that height, all of a sudden the scale of this right here looks like it's small. So, in return, and I think a lot of you might not like this, unfortunately, again, there's the AT. I just want to show this again. That's the AT, at right there. And that's the ATM6. So you'll see the ATAT -AT comes up right about there. So again, you can see how off the how how much the scale is off here. Um, but I think what I'm going to end up doing is just use the Lego ATM6 model and just not use any ATATs to throw off scale. Um, and I know some of you will immediately call it, well, you know, you're not being accurate to this scene. Obviously, the majority of the vehicles here are ATM6s. I, th I don't think it's a big deal that I don't put any ATATs in this mock. It's just going to be such a problem if I make a bigger one. The scale of all of this will be just thrown off if I make an ATM6 any bigger than the current one right here. Because just imagine there's going to be seven of those right here, seven all along here. That's going to be uh, against this huge rock wall. That'll be, I think... I think that'll be about about the right scale. Um, it'll be under scale for minifigures, but it'll be, you know, relative to the size. This is relative to the size of the base, I feel like. I feel like that's a good combination. Same with the TIE Fighter over there. I think that, that works fine with the scale of things that I have going on here. I know that Kylo Ren shuttles right here as well. I may or may not, it's over there. I may or may not put it in the mock. Just depends on space and room and stuff like that. Um, we'll just see, honestly. So that's what I'm thinking. Seven, six or seven ATM sixes only. I don't think I'll put any ATATs in. Another thing I know you guys might say was, well, why don't you make a mini ATAT? Well, if I made a mini ATAT that comes up to about here, that's like a chibi ATAT. And then all of a sudden, with all the minifigures here, you're thrown off by that. So I don't know. I feel like that would be just weird if I made a small little ATAT. Now, I'm sure what a lot of you are is, what is this doing here? So the leaked Lego images uh, showed that there will be a defense on crate set, which will have a ski speeder, which is with those speeders coming across the, um, the salt, uh, I guess the salt desert, I guess you could call it. Um, and yeah, these ski, uh, ski speeders, they're about this size. So what I ended up doing is I took the resistance transport set and I took off the gun <laughs> over there that gun right there. Um, and yeah, I took off the gun and that's about the size of what the set's gonna be from what I can tell. It's not gonna be, it's obviously gonna be a lot thinner, but it will be that length um, with that type of, I mean, this is, it's gonna have like this type of thing on the end. I would show pictures, but you know, Lego and their copyright uh, stuff, they can be quite harsh about that. We'll see this set in like a month or so. Um, but anyhow, that's what that's there is to prove the size and scale of the ski speeder. Honestly, the ski speeder's huge. It's way bigger than it should be from Lego, but they ended up making it big and that throws off the scale to the ATM6, I'm aware. But honestly, just gonna we're just gonna have to deal with that. So there'll be probably probably like five ski speeders coming out right here. So imagine that. Uh, vehicle times five around here and then there'll be like two more on the inside, you know, kind of being prepped or whatever and You'll just have this kind of close quarters battle right here And I know a lot of you will be like, you know, that's kind of pushing it uh, Because there's not a lot of breathing room between the base here and the ATM sixes and then on top of that you put this trench in here 
So I, I do realize there's not much room, especially right here. And I've also considered, you know, pushing the base back. But honestly, if I do that, it's gonna be hard because if I push this back, that means I have to push the mountains back. And by pushing the mountains back, if I cut this in half right here, if I put it back here, it's gonna be extremely hard to build mountains this tall with this little room right here. You need this extra room so that when these bricks start slanting up, that you have that extra room to kind of slant back and, uh, you know, um, engineering problems occur if you have little space like that when you're building the mountains. I mean, you guys can just look back at building Kashyyyk and some of the issues I had with that was not having enough building room. Therefore, I had to increase it. And so that is what I'm kind of prepping for right here. So to everybody who says push this back, it's really not possible Otherwise, the height of the mock has to come down. And I think the height where it's at, in my opinion, I think it's perfect. I don't think it should be much taller than it is right now. It could be a little bit taller, but honestly, then I can't kind of reach it uh, with, without being uncomfortable um, in terms of building it. So that's what I'm thinking, guys. I think everything the way it is right now is about the best I can get it in terms of scale. I don't think I should build a bigger ATM-6. As much as I want to push the base back and give it more breathing room between the ski, uh, ski speeders and the ATM sixes, I just don't think it's possible without having to take the height down to the base. So that's where I'm at right now. Let me know down in the comments what you guys think. Am I on the right track? If you guys have a better idea of creating breathing room or something like that without sacrificing the space of the uh, the, the the big. Uh, wall back here let me know of course obviously i could just take the whole wall out in itself and just have a bunch of turrets and a trench and a bunch of ski speeders all along here just you know fighting against actual scale atm sixes sure i could do that but i think this this mountain this wall this base this whole area right here is going to be important in the movie and that's why i want to make it so yes i could make actual uh, scale atm sixes use the scale that lego has made for the ski speeders get rid of the whole wall and just have a huge you know battle fest going on here but that mock would be boring and easy to do it's just a big flat plane with uh some atm sixes versus ski speeders with some turrets and trenches that's not as interesting. I feel like this whole base right here will add that pizzazz, will add that interesting part to the mock. So it's, I think it's an, an important thing that, uh, that, that, that that is included. All right, well, I think that's enough, guys. I've talked for long enough, but uh, let's go ahead and exit out on this segment. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed the segment. Put, uh, put a lot more time in this segment, I feel like, than last week's segment. Uh, last week was just a bunch of, you know, papers and visual stuff. Um, you know, kind of go over some parts. But now, this behind me, you have a good idea of what I'm thinking for Crate. Now it's, now it's kind of real, I feel like. This is much more, hey, it's actually happening now. Um, and that's exciting. That really, really honestly is exciting. It's going to be a long road ahead, of course. Um, it's kind of nerve wracking saying to myself, hey, you know, David, you got to commit to this. You got to you got to stay on this for the next like eight months to a year um, building this mock. And, you know, I'm going to try to build it as fast as possible. But at the same time, I'm not really going to rush too much because I want it to be good. I want it to be nice and detailed. There's an important balance between overly detailed and simplicity, especially with this mock, because of considering how barren the landscape is, at least out in the front here. It's an important thing is how simple do you want to make it versus how detailed you want to make it. And that's something we're going to explore as the series goes on. Um, I think that's pretty much it. You know, I talked in the beginning of the video about the, you know, ski speeder, and I talked a little bit at the end of the video, you know, using the resistance. I think it's the resistance transport, a bomber set. Oh, no, the bombers over on the shelves. Um, the resistant transport set. Uh, use that as a visual representation of the ski speeder. Obviously, the ski speeder is pretty minifigure scale accurate. The ATM-6 is just severely off. That causes problems. You know, the ATM-6, I should build my own. It should be bigger. But if I did that, that means the wall back here would have to be bigger. The whole monk would just have to be bigger. And that in itself causes more problems because then it's getting too big. Um, and, you know, we talked about pushing the wall back or not, not even having the base at all. 
you know, I think those are not really the great ideas that we should go for. Um, I do really want to hear your feedback down below in the in the comments uh, about everything that I'm doing here and what I'm you know going towards. Am I am I going in the right direction? That's what I want to hear uh, down in the comments below. Um, but yeah, guys, I'll see you next week, week three, and you know we're coming very close up to the Last Jedi premiere. Again, some of you are probably watching this after the Last Jedi has already come out. That's fine, but. As this video is being recorded, I haven't seen it yet, so it's very exciting that I'm developing Crate without even seeing the movie. Um, and once I see the movie and, uh, and 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 really get an idea of what this this planet, what that base looks like, what the battle actually, what happens within that battle, those are all key components that will uh, reflect in what changes come to the mock in the future. I think the last thing I want to kind of go over is that Battlefront 2 came out this week. And I've been playing a lot uh, with my friends. Great game. If you haven't gotten it, you should. It's it's like the ultimate Star Wars game to have, especially if you like, you know, different planets and huge battles. This is like the ultimate game for me, considering what I do. Um, but anyhow, the there's actually going to be a crate DLC coming soon, um, and I'm going to use that. And I'll talk about it once it actually comes out. But I'm going to probably use that more than the actual movie to develop uh, crate, at least its details. We have the layout down for the most part, but in terms of actually what this base looks like with the close-up of the mountains or these turrets or the trench, all of that's kind of up in the air right now until I see the movie and go into the game and check out that DLC map of Crate. Those are gonna be important things, uh, again, in the development of this. All right, well, I think that's gonna be it, guys. I'll see you guys next week. Hope you have a great and wonderful day. Bye-bye.